Thank you. Uh, so I, my name is Colin Drucker. I'm with a consulting firm called PlaceWorks. We're contracted with the city of Barstow. Um, and uh, Jeanette is, is online. She's also working with the city. And, and um, we're helping the city update the entirety of the general plan, not only because of the, the uh, big project, uh, but because of some of the other interests. So I'm going to provide an overview of the overall general plan update and uh, obviously the, the information that we have to share right now on the big project. Um, so in 2015, the city updated its general plan, but that focus was really through 2020. It was a short range general plan. And in, in 2020, the city said, hey, we, we need to update the general plan. We already have to look at housing, safety, and environmental justice. Um, and so by the time they got through that, they then uh, brought us on board to help them uh, complete the update. Um, and in We've done some work already, so we've done some uh, stakeholder outreach. Uh, we've developed some working draft land use plans, goals, and policies to help inform people and, and start the environmental analysis, uh, which we did through um, the, the launch of the, of the environmental process with a scoping meeting that was held uh, in March. Um, and we're going to be finishing up the rest of the general plan in this year. Um, and that includes coordinating with BNSF on the, the big project. And the idea overall is to um, get through to adoption and certification in 2025. So that's the, the high overview. This is the city's current land use plan. And you can see um, kind of on the far southwest is uh, some dotted lines. That is the uh, potential uh, annexation area that would represents the majority of, of the big project. Uh, the, the balance of the big project would be within the city's existing current boundaries, kind of in that backward shaped L industrial uh, space along the river. Um, and I'm gonna go through uh, some of the working draft land use changes that we have for the overall city. Um, but this is the context that was around for the 2015 general plan. So you had a plan and some interest for a couple thousand homes and a couple thousand more jobs at the at the, the kind of dotted circles that you see there. Um, but what happened was obviously uh, with the concept of the big specific plan uh, and some other interests, um, the, the patterns of where land use developments were going were dramatically different. Uh, and the, the magnitude obviously was was much larger. So, you know, at least a couple thousand more homes. Uh, and upwards of, you know, over way over 10,000 jobs. So this is the area that is uh, more accurately representing the, the big specific plan boundary. So as I said before, partially in the city, partially needing uh, an annexation, um, or at least that's the, that's the goal. So uh, the Barstow International Gateway Project, that's what big stands for. Um, so you can see on the map there, obviously getting cargo to and from the ports of, of Los Angeles and Long Beach um, uh, throughout the country. This is a, a major uh, facility that would serve that area, and it would uh, focus uh, essentially exclusively on train, uh, on, on carrying cargo through trains. Um, it would be the largest facility in North America. It's about 4,500 acres. Uh, part of that is, as you'll see, uh, covers area that, that is really serving as a, a buffer for the river. Um, <clears throat> the intent is to rectify some of the um, inefficiencies that are present with the current process of carrying cargo to and from the ports. Um, so uh, the ports of LA and Long Beach uh, are tremendously important and inf influential in, in cargo and goods movement in the U.S. Um, and right now, uh, cargo from overseas, overseas arrives in, in 40 foot containers that are then trucked from the ports to warehouses throughout uh, the, the rest of LA uh, and Southern California. Those containers, the goods are unloaded um, and repackaged into 53 foot domestic containers. Um, and then those containers are uh, again put on trucks and carried uh, elsewhere. Uh, on to uh, onto trains or trucks. Um, some of them actually come back to the port. So there's kind of a, a back and forth and a lot of, of, of kind of wasted time and energy um, and emissions that, that are generated. 
so the idea here, um, if you if you follow uh, this uh, the numbering scheme here, uh, number one is is where to start, and that's where cargo containers um, all on rail uh, would be arriving from the ports into the proposed big facility. Uh, then if you follow the uh, blue line, um, they would go all the way uh, around on site uh, to the number two position um, and handle with zero or near zero emission cargo handling equipment. So this is, is uh, very different from older facilities where you have uh, electric and hybrid electric uh, on site uh, equipment, which is actually a source of a lot of the emissions of, of these types of facilities. It's the on-site equipment, uh, much more so. Um, and then those containers would be what's called transloaded onto, um, uh, into the warehouse areas uh, and, and, and repackaged as needed. Um, and then they would go back onto trains. So you would really have a train-to-train -train operation here. Um, there would be an extremely minimal number of trucks that are basically just kind of catching up to the trains from outside, extremely minimal. So this is very beneficial from an emission standpoint and an efficiency standpoint. Here's a more detailed look at the big facility. Uh, in the kind of south of the, of the existing rail lines, you would have an expansion of, of the rail facilities there, and that would be the rail yard where you can really take in these, these 8,000, 10,000 foot trains uh, not having to break them up like you like you have to now. Um, I know Port of Long Beach, I think, has is, is got some funding for some space, but that's that's a ways out. Um, and this would uh, eliminate the the inefficiencies of having to break trains apart, um, uh, either going there or coming back. Uh, number two area, that kind of blue area, that's where on the north side of the tracks, that is really what's where the what's called Transload Warehouse Center. So it's where all of the warehousing would be built um, in order to uh, reclassify and, and move around the goods in the containers uh, to then go back onto the trains. And then number three, that space there is um, the, the conceptual location for a solar farm that would supplement the energy needs uh, due to the, the large number of, of electricity-based uh, on-site equipment that would be used. Um, so that would, it would not provide all, but it would supplement a lot of what is needed there. So there's about, uh, the rail yard would generate about 1,100 employees, uh, direct employment, uh, and the warehouse center itself would have about another 7,500 employees, um, about 9 million square feet of warehousing in total. Um, these, this warehousing would not serve external customers. This is not a facility where people are going to be able to build warehousing outside of this facility and truck their containers into the facility to kind of shortcut the train ride. Um, this is all internally focused BNSF uh, uh, working with their customers on this site and, and the containers don't leave the site. They all go train to train. Um, and that's a big difference from how these facilities normally are, are operated or are perceived. So there is other development interest uh, east of the of the 15 and north of the outlets. Is there's somebody looking for uh, some large residential development areas west of the uh, Barstow Community College? There's areas where people have, have had long-standing uh, interest in developing a lot of homes, and it's kind of near the community core. Uh, west of the 15 and 58, there is some interest in warehousing. Um, there's still, even though it would not interact with the big facility, uh, there's still some interest as the kind of appetite for warehousing continues to spread north. And then south of the 15 and the old 58, uh, uh, there are some areas where it's kind of long been desired. Uh, but as you'll see in a land use plan, we think that these are can be appropriate locations that don't uh, impact the community as much. And then there are some desires for uh, casino development uh, through tribal entities. Uh, south of the outlets. So obviously, this much change uh, has a lot of planning implications. So how do we arrange um, uh, new land uses? How do they affect existing land uses? What does it mean for utility uh, and, and utilities and transportation infrastructure? What's the amount and type of housing that we're going to be building? And um, how do we make sure that we still uh, minimize impacts on the natural environment and preserve uh, our, our resources, 
obviously including water, one of the chief among them. Um, for the Barstow community itself, looking at new jobs and training opportunities, uh, uh, looking at the big facility in particular to uh, derive a lot of um, job opportunities uh, that require uh, technical training, um, but looking at whether or not, and we're working with all of the various uh, groups, uh, schools, et cetera, especially with the help of, of Jeanette, um, to look at what new public facilities are needed, where should they be built, um, what's the ideal location for them and, and size and timing, um, and then how do you preserve and maximize uh, cultural and historic resources. And for the city, we're obviously looking from a fiscal standpoint, well, how do they budget for this? Uh, what, what, how, how clear can we make the crystal ball on, on when and, and where development's gonna happen so that they can provide the public services and, and partner with the appropriate entities to make sure that the quality of life improves. So again, this is the current land use plan. Um, and I'm going to uh, show with you right now uh, the proposed, but obviously uh, um, this is a, a, a large area. Um, so I'm gonna walk through the, the changes um, that, that we're currently working on. This is uh, very much a working draft. We just released this uh, concept to the public in March and um, we, we took some comments through uh, that process and uh, anybody has any uh, opinions or thoughts, they can they can go on Barso's uh, website and it has the contact information for uh, making comments or, or having contact uh, for people to submit their, their thoughts or questions. Um, but conceptually what we are doing here in the eastern part of the city um, is taking an area that's primarily vacant and, and planned for low density development, some, some diverse uses, really focusing the uh, residential capacity for the city into this core area next to the existing community area. Um, and this will help ensure that new development, as it always does, brings new public facilities and, and improvements, uh, brings those improvements uh, either to existing facilities or near existing neighborhoods so that they can benefit from them. Really shifting, and you'll see in another slide, shifting the residential growth from having capacity in the west and the east to shifting capacity to the east. Because what we didn't want to do is have a large project like the, the big specific plan come in and offer a lot of jobs and, a, and, and drive increased demand for residential and then have that new residential housing go exclusively on the west and create almost that, that kind of historic two city scenario that you've seen pop up in all too many cities where you have the new and the old and the old continues to deteriorate and the new is what gets everything. Um, so we wanted to set the stage so that new residential growth really occurred in the east side. Um, also, obviously, more efficient in many ways for uh, transportation infrastructure and, and other public services. Um, in the, the northeast area, kind of outside of the city um, uh, main core area, that is where um, Previously, it was uh, kind of almost erroneously designated for uh, open space and, and diverse use. Um, but it does make sense, especially with the property owner's uh, interest, uh, to have that as a potential location right on and off the freeway for warehousing in a way that uh, doesn't impact the, the rest of the community as much. So then on to the west side, um, you can see here there is a, a kaleidoscope of land use colors here and really a, um, not a cohesive vision for future development. Um, just a, a, a lot of potential conflicts that um, either already are arising or, or could arise in the future. Um, and then if you look at the, the big specific plan coming in there, if you really kept a lot of that residential there, and the, that purple, by the way, allows residential as well. It's that diverse use uh, option, so multifamily, single family. So allowing that much residential to be in close proximity to industrial uses, even though the big facility is not gonna generate the emissions uh, that uh, one would normally assume. There's other gray kind of uh, land use designations in the existing. So what we've done instead is proposed a new business park designation. Um, we may be tweaking this. We got some input from the open house uh, in, in March, uh, looking at there are some existing residential uh, Clusters in this area, people who developed there a while ago, um, in some cases, because there was a long standing plans of doing some residential that just never really panned out as much. Uh, but we're looking at having a business park designation that would not allow warehousing. 
uh, so this would be kind of a holding bin for when employment generating uses, there was enough demand that those areas could be developed uh, there. <clears throat> and then um, kind of taking those planned industrial areas and, and clustering them closer to the 15 and kind of farther away um, from uh, Lenwood, the unincorporated community there, and farther away from some of the other disadvantaged unincorporated communities. Um, here you see uh, there is a, a green zone, uh, basically where, where cannabis is allowed. Um, and so that's another reason why we are looking at that business park designation and, and transitioning that residential capacity uh, to other places is to be more in line with um, where the uh, where the potential and minimizing the potential land use conflicts of, of future uses that could go into that overlay. So again, this is the the broader planning area for Barstow. So you can this is the the working draft uh, land use plan for Barstow. So you can you can see kind of on the on the east side you have that um, really conventional community core area uh, maintained and expanded to allow for some intensification and residential growth there brought on by uh, the growth of new development, primarily through the, the big specific plan. And then the rest of the unincorporated area, we, we, we're showing this in a single land use um, designation system, but essentially reflecting what the unincorporated county designations are for the areas outside of the, the city's boundary. But this is the city's entire sewer of influence. You can see, obviously, most of it still is retained for open space uh, and essentially kind of rural development. Um, so in terms of build out, um, this is, these are the numbers right now that, that occur. Uh, they're good for 2023 conditions, about 9,000 homes or households rather, about 25,000 people and about 14,000 jobs. Um, and this plan would, would chart a course where the city could potentially double in size over the next 25 years. So adding about another 7,000 households, about 21,000 people, <clears throat> and about 13,000 jobs. Uh, about eight to 10,000 of those would be direct jobs uh, on the big facility, and the rest would be uh, generated by the, the household growth um, needing additional services. Uh, one of the things uh, we talked to early on was the, the hospital uh, folks and them saying, boy, it'd be great to get a lot more people here because then we could um, retain and attract uh, better medical professionals um, and, and function and, and uh, retain our, our solvency. So uh, getting this growth here is key not only for future prosperity, for but for um, improving the life and, and maintaining the quality of life that people have right now. So it'll be about 2048 is the, the horizon year that we're looking at. So we are doing an EIR, um, both for the general plan update. Um, it is also uh, being done at a project level for the big specific plan. So this is gonna be one EIR that covers both the entirety of the build out scenario at a programmatic level and the big specific plan at a project level. <clears throat> We are doing a variety of technical studies, uh, obviously the roadway and traffic analysis, even though level of service is not a CEQA issue, it is very much a, a functional reality of making sure the roads work, especially when you have this much growth and the potential need for new roads uh, for water and, and wastewater. <coughs> uh, we're working with Golden State <coughs> Water and, and others to make sure we understand what the water demands are going to be not only for the big specific plan, uh, both during construction and, and ultimately operations, but also for the entirety of the general plan and making sure that we're understanding uh, the, the flow of water and the demands and the supply. From air quality, looking at how all of this new uh, growth will impact air quality. Um, the uh, nice aspect of the big specific plan is, is its uh, use of uh, zero or near zero emission vehicles and equipment, um, and that helps uh, avoid a lot of the air quality problems that would normally be associated with the, the conventional style of those projects. 
And then for energy, um, doubling the, the city has uh, some potentially big impacts on, on energy demand, so we're working with utility providers on that. And then obviously paying special attention uh, to folks, uh, uh, whether it's uh, the, the tribal entities uh, or looking at uh, other cultural resources and then also things from uh, many eons past that uh, might be impacted through construction activity. So again, this is the, the project timeline. Um, we kind of started out in uh, March. I think it may have been uh, technically uh, still uh, still uh, winter. Um, went to the, the council uh, to get kind of just their uh, exposure to it, uh, doing the technical analysis all uh, this year, um, updating the general plan, uh, getting a, a public review draft of the general plan out in early 2025. Uh, and then the public draft version of the draft EIR out, public review version of the draft EIR out uh, later on in 2025, responding to comments um, and preparing a final EIR in, uh, later in 2025 and then going through to adoption hearings. So that is the uh, uh, speed run of the next 25 years potentially of Barstow and I'm available for any questions or comments.